So we have made it here to the Meraki boulders. Did I pronounce it right? Meraki boulders. <laughs> uh, pretty gray, pretty windy. So we're just scouting. Wow, it's, I think it started raining too. Good day for scouting, not such a good day for shooting. We made it to the boulders. It's a cracked boulder with a little fountain inside. Alright, so it is quite dark. Uh, we kind of scouted out the area. Found the nice boulders to shoot. Uh, hopefully by sunrise we'll have some really nice water motion going on here. Best case scenario, sun comes out, we get the sun glowing on the rocks. Worst case scenario, we get more of this really really dark weather um, and I'll just chalk this up as a, sh a scouting trip um, which honestly happens a lot in landscape photography a lot of trips come with um, less than ideal weather and you know it's just all part of it but it's still fun to be out here you know get to go to the beach in the rain in the wind and uh, yeah here in New Zealand, so hard to be upset. So, just got done shooting sunrise, and it actually cleared up quite a bit. We didn't get a crazy amount of light in the sky, like no you know, crazy burn or anything like that. The horizon, there was a nice little gap, so the sun shined through, gave a little bit of glow to the foreground. Usually when I shoot seascapes, I wanna be in the water at least a little bit. And basically my rule of thumb is, if your pants don't look like this, by the end of the shoot, you probably weren't close enough or in the water enough. Being in the water, you get this just beautiful, beautiful wave motion coming straight at the camera. Um, it ends up being a little bit more immersive of a shot than standing far back and then trying to shoot the coast from afar. Unless you find a really interesting telephoto composition. So the light got a lot better and we got some awesome clouds going on so uh, I decided I would take some more pictures. The sun's looking pretty good, pretty strong. And I found this little pattern that I think is pretty cool where the water came back in, created these nice little ridges in the sand. There's some textures on this rock. It's a pretty small rock in comparison to the rest that I've seen here. This isn't exactly why people come to these boulders, but I just thought this was a cool shot, so I wanted to try it out. I'm getting a lot of flare in the lens. Quick tip, if you have flare, maybe do two exposures. Take your finger and block the sun flare, and then take another shot for the actual sun and then you could mask out that flare later on.
All right, so we are done at the boulders. Pretty damn cool. Um, kind of an interesting detour. We took a pretty long detour to get to the boulders. I think it's about eight hours, which sounds kind of ridiculous for anyone visiting somewhere. Like, let's let's take a eight-hour detour to see some rocks on the beach. But um, for a landscape photographer, it was really really awesome to see. But we are off. We're gonna head to Mount Cook uh, National Park. And it'll be nice to get some stunning mountain scenes. I'd say New Zealand's probably one of my favorite places I've ever been to photograph. I mean, there's just so much variety here. So many diverse landscapes and just the people are amazing. The food is amazing. The coffee is amazing. A lot of photos and stories don't do justice to just how great of a country this is. We're not too far from Mount Cook now, and we stopped at this lake over here. Seriously, one of the most incredible shades of blue I've ever seen. I think it'd be probably pretty cool to do a time lapse here. Time lapse, maybe like a wide shot of the lake with the blue color, and then uh, I think a telephoto shot of the mountains back there because there's some awesome rainfall coming down. All right, got the time lapse rolling. Should be good. There's a lot of movement in the clouds. The clouds are changing a ton. So thanks so much everyone for watching and now I'm gonna go over some of the images that I shot for sunrise Okay, so this is my first image. This was actually one of the first images I shot that morning And I love that bit of glow on the horizon. That was my favorite part And I also love this turbulent wave motion that's crashing around the rocks and then leading into the camera sometimes we wish for those crazy burns where you get cotton candy clouds, but Something about this image, I actually like that the area around the glow is a little bit darker, a little more moody and monochromatic. Okay, so here's another image that I really enjoyed from that morning. And what I love most about this photograph is how apparent the textures are showcased on these boulders in this specific composition, having the camera so close to these boulders. And then I also love that symmetrical composition with the boulders kind of evenly spread out. And then you've got that water flow that's just sort of leading in and making this tiny little waterfall right into the camera. And actually for this shot and the previous shot, uh, these are single exposures, so I didn't actually have to do any exposure blending for these images. I shot these a little bit dark and brought back some of the highlights in the sky and then recovered some of those shadows to get more dynamic range, but that was all possible through one exposure. Okay, so here's that image that I was kind of fiddling around with in the sand with these sort of receding tide patterns and I loved this little pool around the rock where you can see some of those reflections from the cloud. Now this was a multiple exposure. I had to do a little bit of exposure blending to control the exposure on the sun. I think I had to do about three exposures to retain all that dynamic range. I really enjoyed how this image came out. I love how the clouds kind of pull you into the scene 
and same with those ridges down below in the sand. And I'm doing a few different exposures for this image as well. I am focus stacking this, so I actually did two exposures, one focused on the foreground and one focused on the background. And if you'll remember in the video, I actually put my finger in front of the lens to remove some of that flare. So I did all of that in this shot. All right, so this image is perhaps my favorite from the shoot. And this is, to be honest, the one that I put the most work into. I scouted this composition. I just love this little fountain. And I knew that if the waves came up and they poured more water into that fountain, that there was going to be a little waterfall pouring off of it. And I was just really praying that we got the right light and the right conditions to showcase this boulder. And of course we did. The waves were extremely high when the sun was coming up and then the tide started to recede just enough to where I could get over to this little fountain rock. I think my favorite elements about it are the sort of mimicking patterns in the water and in the sky. You'll notice the sky leads up to the top right of the frame as the water does the opposite, leading towards the bottom left. All right, so thanks everyone for watching the video, and if you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next one.